more than 2,000 cruise and ballistic Russian missiles downed over Ukraine. Ukraine's armed forces shot down more than 2,000 cruise and ballistic Russian missiles since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, the Defense Ministry reported. Another two ballistic missiles launched from occupied Crimea were shot down over Kyiv on March the 25th following multiple explosions, according to the Air Force. Debris fell in the Solomyansky and Pechersk districts, damaging a three-story building in the latter. At least two people have been reportedly injured and eight others suffered from shock. The rescue operation is ongoing. Moscow has launched over 8,000 missiles and more than 4,600 drones against Ukraine as of February the 22nd, since it's all out war, said Yuri Inat, a former spokesperson for Ukraine's Air Force. That's a result of the titanic work of Ukrainian air defenders. Thousands of lives were saved by modern air defense systems provided by our partners, the ministry wrote on X, reporting on the destroyed targets. Over the past week, Moscow launched several large-scale attacks on Ukraine's cities, including energy infrastructure. Around 190 missiles, 140 Shahed-type drones and 700 aerial bombs were used, President Volodymyr Zelensky said. Local authorities reported multiple injured and killed civilians. Ukrainian officials urged Western allies to provide Kyiv with more weapons, including air defense systems and missiles, to protect Ukrainian cities from regular strikes. Russia has launched its third wave of missile strikes against Ukraine's capital Kyiv in five days as part of its escalating aerial bombardment of the city. The injuries and damage appear to have been the result of falling missile debris, as the Ukrainian Air Force said it had shot down two missiles over the city. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky renewed his appeal to Western partners to provide more weaponry to protect against the unrelenting aerial attacks. We never tire of repeating that Ukraine needs more air defense, he said. This is security for our cities and saves human lives. Russian opposition in exile leans towards supporting armed resistance against Putin. More and more Russian dissidents in exile are beginning to advocate for armed struggle against Putin's rule, though not enough have embraced this tactic as of yet, three Russian resistance group members said. There's definitive support from the emigrant centers, says Alexei Baranovsky, a volunteer fighter from the Freedom of Russia Legion. Only in the third year of the war did they start to consolidate and provide assistance. Though largely delayed, it's there. It would be helpful if recruitment for anti-Putin resistance groups could be expanded across Europe, according to Baranovsky. For now, only the Civic Council, Russian anti-government NGO based in Poland, is actively working with the Siberian battalion, he said. Where's the rest of the opposition in this regard? The direction is right, but we hope for more significant results. We're pleased with the trend we're seeing, said Cold, a member of the Siberian Battalion, another Russian resistance group. More and more people realize that, unfortunately, armed struggle is the only way to change power in Russia. Putin's special military operation has made this clear to everyone. In the current climate in Russia, advocating for fundamental human rights like personal choice, freedom of conscience, religious practice, and inherent personal freedoms demands a more assertive approach. This necessity arises as peaceful methods have unfortunately not achieved the desired outcomes. Cold explained that peaceful protest doesn't work in Russia and as a result, his group contains people from a variety of walks of life, including professional soldiers, business people, mechanics, and so on. At some point, they all understood that simply lighting flashlights doesn't work, concluded Cold, referencing the numerous peaceful demonstrations brutally suppressed by Putin's regime. The stance of prominent figures in the Russian opposition thankfully began to change in the war's third year, said Denis Nikitin, commander of the Russian Volunteer Corps. They've realized that roundabouts, forums, petitions, paper cups and flashlights can't budge a despotic regime like Putin's. The opposition's efforts should be directed at supporting the fighting Russian units. I'm talking about the Russian Volunteer Corps, Siberian Battalion and Free Russian Legion because we are at the forefront of the attack, the spearhead that must pierce the heart of the Putin regime and perhaps Putin's heart in reality. Nikitin claimed that Russian freedom fighters had gained the support of prominent Russian dissidents, including world-renowned chess master Garry Kasparov. 
There are people who understand that we are carrying out the only possible effective work, waging a war against the regime, Nikitin said. If they're not ready for the same form of struggle, they should either assist us in our fight or not call themselves the Russian opposition. Kremlin instructed to mobilize 300,000 troops for new offensive. In the near future, the Russian authorities plan to mobilize at least 300,000 troops to begin an operation to encircle the second largest city in Ukraine, Kharkiv, for informed sources told Verstka. The next in the plan is Kharkiv and holding the city. This is possibly only in the case of the encirclement. There is a shortage of 300,000 troops. Therefore, everything is ready for mobilization. 2.0, said a source of the publication in the internal political bloc of the presidential administration. According to him, no one wants to turn Kharkiv into a second Mariupol, so there is an idea to make it a showcase of how Russians know how to fight in a civilized way. The need to mobilize 300,000 troops was confirmed by one of Verstka's sources from one of the Western military district offices. The source noted that recruitment to the front could begin as early as March the 25th. They'll try to call reservists to fight in Ukraine, men who are in reserve but have signed a contract with the Ministry of Defense on inclusion in the mobilization human reserve. They can work at any job, but twice a year they are obliged to go to military training camps, which until 2022 were formal. There are about 2 million of them in Russia. Something is planned. Reservists are being recruited now before mobilization. Whether it will happen or not, I do not know, but last time the procedure was the same, says an officer of one of the military bases in the Zabekalsky Krai of Russia. Although military enlistment offices will begin work with those who have not signed contracts with the Ministry of Defense but are in the reserve of the armed forces, including those dismissed from service, those who studied at military universities, those who did not serve for any reason, those who completed alternative civilian service, and women with military specialities. Military enlistment offices have pasted mobilization orders into military tickets of many of them previously. They will also try to send conscripts to the war whose terms are about to end. The task is to sign contracts with those who are ending their service by April and those who ended service last year, says a source close to the presidential administration. They will be persuaded by all means, the interlocutor from the presidential administration confirmed. A new wave of mobilization is also possible.